welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. I was hit with a comment here just recently about ARK ETFs, A-R-K, and uh, did a little bit deeper dive into the products that are offered by ARK. And I would have probably been scared right off as to what I saw initially uh, on some of these ETF products. And I wanted to give you guys some highlights as to what I saw uh, in the ETFs because I've been hit with this question a lot. What do I think about these? Ryan, why aren't you invested in these? Should I invest in these? And after this video, I'm gonna give you some highlights to look at on your own, okay? This is an awareness channel and it is uh, really based around a testimonial on how I seek out my exposure to the stock market. And I do so using a lot of fundamental approaches to the stock market. I do so using year-over-year uh, -year performance. And the idea being that if you're gonna invest for the long term, you wanna make sure that you're getting that year-over-year -year performance. And when I looked at ARC, the first thing that really stuck out to me is the glaring expense ratio, all right? Most of the funds that I saw were, they hung their hat on a 0.75 expense ratio, all right? So for you guys doing the quick math, at 0.03 uh, of the VOO, that's 25 times more the expense ratio to enter into these ETFs. And you think, okay, Ryan, well, that, that's all great and plenty. Most people don't pay attention to that anyway. That's why I bring it to most people's attention because it is super important. Most people look at that and say, that's less than 1%. That doesn't make any difference. I beg to differ. One thing I would caution you guys is to understand how financial planners, they've gotten smart on this deal and they've ruined the reputation of the mutual fund industry so they're just permeating into the ETF and basically transitioning what these used to be in passive investment products for a lot of clients that would just enter into ETFs passively and make good year over year returns. They're basically putting their mitts on these and doing what historically has been proven to be a fool's game. And that is trying to outperform the stock market over and over and again. And a lot of people come to me and they say, yeah, Ryan, but these are up, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50%. I would highly recommend that you do not uh, hang your coattails, your investing career uh, on the performance of ETFs or any investment for that matter uh, on a couple months. Okay, it is absolutely possible for stock and high aggressive ETFs alike to outperform the market when you look at it in a very, very closed, uh, in a vacuum. When you look at it through a very, very uh, finite or a very narrow prism, you're gonna see that there's areas of outperformance. But when I was able to dig a little bit deeper on some of these ARK ETFs, one, one of the things that stuck out to me was that these ETFs really don't hold hundreds of products. Some of them held as little as 30 stocks. And if you're interested in any of these companies, what you're basically doing is you're entering into just these 30 stocks, which goes against the whole premise of entering into ETFs in the first place, and that is to be diversified. So you can just throw diversification right out the window when you're entering into these products, and you're basically saying, Ryan, but look, they've outperformed over the last couple months. They must be good. Let me ask you guys, and I want you to really answer this honestly, because I, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, but when, it, when a stock or an ETF is up 27, 47, 67%, is that really the time that you wanna be entering into these, these ETFs or investments? Of course not. You always wanna be looking at value. You wanna be looking at what a, an investment product can return for you in up markets and down markets. The pharmaceutical ETF that I looked at specifically had 75% of its holdings in uh, biotechnology. And for you guys that have covered the market, you know that biotechnology is an extremely volatile subsector of healthcare. And if you hit it right, you can make a lot of money. But you really need to ask yourself, is, are these products good for the masses out there or would you just be better going ahead and going with uh, what has traditionally worked in the market, what has traditionally worked, and, and stop 
Stop trying to find what I consider to be the next best thing in investments. You're going to get hurt eventually trying to do that, and it's a plan and a strategy that usually doesn't hold up over the long term. All right. Now, the expense that I talked about being 25 times more than the Vanguard's S&P 500, you come back and you say, again, that's not that big of a deal, Ryan. Over the course of a 40-year investment uh, cycle, the VOO is going to cost you $7,000, okay? If you invest in the exact same uh, um, uh, ETF with uh, ARC that everybody's hyping right now, and you hold that for the same amount of time, that same ETF is going to cost you $175,000. 25 times more than the expense for uh, the S&P 500. And a lot of people will be like, that, that's impossible. It's not impossible, it's just mathematics. So where you can see on the onset, you can quickly justify, look, this will outperform enough to justify the fees. All I can tell you is, it better. It very well better outperform the market year in and year out enough to justify the 25 times more of expense that you're entering into uh, to be part of the ARK investment ETFs. Now, finally, I'll just conclude the video by saying this. Entering into actively managed ETFs like I said, is entering into a fool's game. If you're interested in any of the 30 stocks or 40 stocks or 100 stocks that are made up of these, why don't you do your own diligence and actually look into the individual companies? If you're that bullish on ARK ETFs as a financial product, you're putting an awful lot of trust in their, uh, in their um, research and their ability to stock pick because at the end of the day, that is what they are doing. And over the last couple months, and I will say year to date, uh, they have done very, very well. They've done very well through this pandemic. And there's been a lot of companies that have done very, very well and have fared well through this pandemic. And for those that rode the wave well, then they've profited from it. And the shareholders of these uh, ETFs have profited from it as well. But you need to be very, very careful in making investment decisions based on a bunch of hype and a bunch of outperformance over a short amount of time. I think the glaring takeaway for each and every one of you guys is to look at how long these funds have been around. They haven't been around very long and what their year over year, not year to date, but year over year performance has rendered, and I think it's gonna open a lot of your eyes, your guys' eyes to answering the question, should I invest in ARK ETFs at this particular juncture? Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message. You wanna make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of this video. Share the message with anybody out there, maybe looking to seek some exposure in their portfolio through ARK ETFs. Perhaps maybe this can shed some light on some of the highlights that I saw in reviewing these products. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.